Hi, it's John Mitchell, Mayor of New Bedford, and this is another installment of the Mayor's Weekly Update. So I, I just want to talk about vaccines this week because they've been in the news. And obviously, there's a lot happening. It's the focus uh, of our work these days. Um, it's on the front burner. So uh, the, the vaccination effort is going relatively well. Um, and I say relatively well, we're getting more supplies uh, into the city, more doses from the federal government, which is, uh, which is really good. Um, and we've been able to push through a number of people at uh, the vaccination clinics around the city, at the Andrew McCoy Center, as well as um, uh, the EPA terminal on the waterfront. And then there, of course, the other uh, sites, the mass vaccination site over at Circuit City, as well as uh, the sites that South Coast Health is running, as well as others, uh, pharmacies and such. Um, but we still need to catch up. New Bedford still lags behind um, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, as well as many other uh, cities, uh, or at least towns uh, in the state. So uh, we want to encourage people to come out and, and get their shots. There's been a disruption this week. Uh, we know uh, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was put on hold by uh, the federal government. And, um, and so that will slow things down a little bit, but we're still getting uh, doses of the other two vaccines into the city. So uh, it shouldn't hold us up too much. Uh, I, I, there is one real important point uh, that, I, that I want to make, which is, uh, you know, it, it, one, could, one could look at what happened with J&J &J and say, you know, see, I told you so, the vaccines are not safe. And I, I think, and I, and I get that, I get where people are coming from who might, might view it that way, but I, I would submit that it's worth looking at it completely the, you know, the opposite way, which is to say, the federal government looked at this and said, uh, six women out of nearly seven million people uh, who have received the J&J &J vaccine uh, became ill. Now, look, obviously, you know, we want, uh, we want to make sure it's safe, 100% safe, of course, but uh, a one in a million possibility that that could happen, right? It's actually greater than one in a million. A million. Um, nevertheless, the federal government still put the brakes on the thing, which, which goes to show, I would submit, that uh, the vaccines, that the oversight of the federal government is very strict. And that uh, if there is a, uh, a possible risk out there that is something the public should know about, that they've been on it. So they deserve a lot of credit for that. But it also goes to show that you, know, you can have a high level of confidence that the vaccines work and they are safe. So, you know, as we move forward, I would uh, just uh, suggest that everyone keep that in, uh, in mind. Um, if you need to get a vaccine, you can obviously, uh, if you're up for your dose, uh, and, and everybody will be eligible starting on April 19th, uh, you can, of course, go to the state's website and get an appointment at a location around in the city or around the city. Uh, Alternatively, uh, you can call the number on your screen uh, to uh, get on the, the list of folks uh, who, who can get vaccinated uh, right here in the city. Uh, I know a lot of folks don't have internet access and, and we want to make sure that everyone is, uh, is getting connected uh, as best as possible. So um, we'll continue to march on. In the meantime, of course, we have to keep our masks on and, and maintain our social distancing. We are still in a race. Uh, as between the vaccines on the one hand and the virus variants on the other. And uh, we want to hold back the viruses long enough for uh, the vaccines to, to settle in. So uh, we're, we're going to keep at it and we're going to keep everybody informed. Thanks everyone. We'll see you next week.